Tunisia, like every other country in North Africa, has a large minority of black people. Many do jobs that are menial or badly paid. They have little chance of improving their status. After the revolution of 2011, Tunisia adopted a new constitution. It declared that all citizens, male and female, are equal before the law without any discrimination. <laughs> But it seems some Tunisians are still more equal than others. We found the country's black citizens often experience verbal abuse. We also discovered cases where racial prejudice had led to physical violence. <laughs> and in the south of the country, we found evidence of racial segregation that was disturbingly reminiscent of apartheid. No official figures exist, but people we spoke to believe around 15% of Tunisia's population is black, while most regard themselves as white. Black people are clearly underrepresented in many professions. The few that make it say they often experience discrimination. Yasser Latifi is the only black referee in the Tunis Football League. We witnessed the racist abuse he routinely faces. <laughs> Xenophobia is a problem for football the world over, but most governing bodies penalize racially abusive fans. In Tunisia, however, they usually go unpunished. We asked the Tunisian Football Federation to comment, but they did not get back to us. Other black professionals say they also have to suffer abuse in the workplace, as we found when we met Najiba Hamrouni. As an outspoken president of Tunisia's journalists' union, she was attacked by conservative Islamist opponents. The distorted images of Najiba's face were circulated in various forms. محاميه ونشرت شريط فيديو على شبكه التواصل الاجتماعي تهدفتني شخصيا وسمتني بالاسم ونعتتني بنعوت عنصريه رفعت قضيه ضد هذه المحاميه توقفت القضيه لانه ليس هناك قانون يجرم العنصريه في تونس Najiba was determined to file the case if only to spread awareness of the issue of racism at work which she says permeates every level of Tunisian society هناك بعض المحلات وبعض المطاعم وبعض المقاهي لا تشغل إلا السيرفر الأسود اللون لأن من يقدم الخدمة لابد أن يكون أسود اللون. It's not only that most black Tunisians are in low-paid jobs. Some careers, says Najiba, like the media and politics, seem almost off limits. عناش كثير صحفيين سود في تونس يعني من القوش. مذيع أو في التلفزة أو في الإذاعة أسمر البشرة هنا هل هناك وزير أسود طيلة حكم تونس من الاستقلال إلى اليوم ما أن نخفي الأمر ونقول لا يوجد 
لا توجد عنصرية في تونس فنحن كمن يخفي الشمس يعني بغربين To find out more about the kind of abuse black Tunisians say they experience, we met up with Hamza, a rapper who's trying to raise awareness of the problem through his music. pour les plans racistes de la baie de l'Ansourie, mon jeudi de Fiton. Hamza's song provoked mixed reactions. Some of it was deeply insulting, as he tells us. To show us what a black person in the capital routinely faces, Hamza's agreed to wear a covert camera, hidden in a pair of glasses. He set off to film whatever happens to him in the course of a typical day. Later, we'd catch up with him to view the footage. Saadia Musbah is all too familiar with racism. As the only black flight attendant employed by the national airline, she says she's used to being singled out. But nothing prepared her for what happened back in 2013, when she went to get her tire repaired. سبني هاني اللي انا مرا ما نصلحش فولدي كانت رد فعله قالوا المرا اللي ما تصلحش تحكي عليها امي ومن بعد خلطوا عليه زوج زملاء نتاعو شدوا فارس يد من واحد شدوا من يد اليمين الاخر شدوا من يد اليسار شدوها هكا ما عادش ينجم يتحرك وهو يخنق فيه ويجر فيه على خاطر كان عندهم واحد حديد طويل باش يهزوا باش يضربوا به قعدت بيناتهم ما نجم حياتي اللي نقبينه بالودي وقلت مثالش اللي اللي بشي يصير يصير ما يهمش That night, Sadia drove to a police station to report the incident. The criminal codes of many countries contain specific categories for racially aggravated offences, but that's not the case in Tunisia. So Sadia started legal action on the grounds of assault. Zuhur Harbawi a journalist with Tunis Hebdo newspaper had no doubt what motivated the attack. Chargé à un de Tunisien victime d'un acte raciste. Et je dis une Tunisienne et son fils ont été agressés verbalement et physiquement par un des pompistes de la station service. Bon, J'ai mis la, le nom de la, 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 la station en direction de Tunis et tout cela parce qu'ils étaient noirs. Donc j'écris que le gamin a réussi à s'estriper des mains de son agresseur, mais a été victime d'échymose au cou, à l'œil, à la tête et d'un traumatisme crânien, examen pratiqué à Charles Nicole. Sadia's alleged attackers contest her account of events. In fact, they say she assaulted them. After three years, Sadia's legal case has yet to be resolved. But the experience pushed her to become an activist fighting racial prejudice. By now, we'd been told by black Tunisians of all ages that they regularly experienced abuse and discrimination. It was time to catch up with Hamza. He'd spent the day going around Tunis, equipped with a covert camera. We viewed his footage. <laughs> أفعال متاع عنصرية بتفدليك موجودة في تونس أو سيف صفي دم دك كيفاش يخسروا لي ليه ما تقرب ليش حاجات كيما هكا كانوا واحد دخل فيا كيما يقولوا سكينة ولا حاجة في قلب But racial tension isn't restricted to the capital It's to be found nationwide We'd heard about a disturbing case in Benzert, 65 kilometers north of Tunis. 
This small town, which has a predominantly white Tunisian population, is home to Mehdi and his wife Mabruka. They told us they'd been suffering abuse for years. But a few days before we filmed, things had got much worse. Several neighbors witnessed the attack. This woman, who wished to remain anonymous, told us what she'd seen. وضربها خاطر مبروكة تم من ولد ولد الراجل يعني علاش باش نكذبوا احنا هو اللي ضرب كان 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 ضربها بحجرة حللها 11 نهار رزقها يعني كلها دم وحتى الدم في القاع وفي الفولارة وفي حوايجها وكل فهمت والناس الكل شافت هنايك اللي هي يعني ضربها الطفل بعد جات الشرطة الشرطة هزت الطفل وبوه من بعد سايبوه several people had seen what happened but the police didn't take any witness statements. Back in Tunis, Sadia explained why Mehdi's case, and apparent official indifference to it, is by no means unique. Le racisme en Tunisie existe. Mais ce qui n'existe pas chez nous, c'est la reconnaissance. Reconnaître ce mal. Si le texte suprême ne stipule pas que la discrimination ou le racisme est un crime, sur quoi va travailler le législateur Et je pense qu'ils se disent que le racisme n'existe pas parce que nous n'existons pas. Sadia offers to take us to the south of Tunisia, where she's been documenting new cases of racial abuse. We were heading to Sidi Makhlouf, a town where mostly white Tunisians live. But as we approached its outskirts, the local police spotted Sadia and stopped the car. After they detained us for several hours, we were allowed to continue, but without Sadia. The point noir, ce serait moi. Ils ne veulent pas que je sois dans l'équipe. Allez, ça l'embête qu'on dise l'état des lieux tel qu'il est. Il faut le dire maintenant, il faut le dire, et je suis certaine que si on n'avait pas raison, si je n'avais pas raison, il n'y aurait pas cette résistance. Sadia believed the police had another reason to delay our journey. We'd heard that school children in Sidi Makhlouf were being segregated by color and forced to travel on separate buses. En regardant l'heure, probablement pour nous faire rater encore une fois le bus de le, le, le bus des, des élèves. Euh, ils n'ont jamais voulu que les caïrés soient ça. Je suis une citoyenne libre et ça ne m'empêchera pas de faire ce que j'ai envie de faire. The police insisted we left Sadia at the edge of town. We rushed to film the buses. We spotted them and followed at a distance. We'd been told one of the buses picks up only white children and the other carries only black children. What we saw seemed to bear this out. To find out what had led to the segregation of buses, we met one of the very few mixed couples in Guspa, an overwhelmingly black village. 
Ahmed and Salaf believe their marriage so outraged the people in the surrounding white towns that they insisted black and white children should travel separately. Sulaf's family opposed the marriage. For many years, the couple were vilified. We left Amir and Sulaf's family and went back to find Sadia. When we spotted her on the street, we phoned to check she was okay to join us. But it seemed the police were still keeping an eye on her. To escape the attention of the police, Sadia took refuge in the house of Augusta resident. Où on va comme ça D'autre part, je suis contente et je leur dis merci de nous offrir sur un plateau d'argent ce que vous essayez de cacher pendant des années. Pourquoi ne pas dévoiler le racisme Pourquoi ne pas en parler Aujourd'hui, vous allez m'obliger à dire que la Tunisie est raciste et elle est en train de devenir ségrégationniste. S'il n'y avait rien comme ils le disent, s'il n'y a pas tout ce que je prétends dire, pourquoi ils m'arrêteraient S'ils m'arrêtent, c'est qu'il y a quelque chose qu'ils veulent cacher et que je veux dévoiler et que je dévoilerai, bon gré, mal gré.